Uh, welcome back, y'all. Um, we're going to be making a bigger humidor than we did last time. This one's going to be about four feet wide and um, probably about six and a half feet tall. Um, it's going to have four compartments, two compartments at the top with glass doors, two compartments at the bottom uh, with shaker type doors. Now we're unloading the mahogany sheet goods and then also got Sapelli solid wood. I'm going to use my track saw to cut these down to the proper measurements. And of course it's only fitting to be smoking a cigar while I'm making a humidor. And uh, sorry for the first part of the video, I didn't have any uh, too much tool background noise. I actually had the radio going in the background and I wasn't thinking about it. And I don't want to take a chance of them hitting me for copyrights violation. So you just get to hear my voice for right now. And we're gonna be um, cutting down three of these. And this will be the sides, the dividers, and the leftover will be the shelving inside. Should make quick work of these last couple sheets here. starting to become uh, beautiful outside this spring weather these longer days hopefully y'all enjoying those like I'm enjoying them I guess I should have sped this part of the video up a little bit more one of these days I'm actually gonna learn how to edit properly <laughs> And here we are cutting these sheet goods down even further to the proper measurements. Um, this is going to be, I'm cutting the bottoms and the tops. And the way I'm going to put these together is um, I'm going to put some dados um, down the middle. And this will be used for the separators of the uh, four sections. And you'll see in a few now how that's going to come together and make sense for you. And you know, I'm, I'm really liking those Jessam um, stock guides that I've put on my table saw. Um, especially when I'm cutting down the sheet goods. It definitely helps you keep um, the boards up against up against the uh, fence of the saw um, I definitely recommend those and here I'm gonna um, switch out my blades to my dado stack um, like I said that's gonna be the joinery for these separators I know a lot of people don't like switching out their their blades to the stack but uh, I actually prefer it it really doesn't take that much more time and once you get them in there, it's definitely more efficient than just trying to uh, hold it all out with just a single blade. Um, I did put a uh, spoil fence on my regular fence because you want to bring that dado blade right up uh, to the fence there and you definitely don't want to cut into your, your main fence. And this is just a um, 
scrap piece of wood. I just want to make sure that I've got it to the correct, uh, the correct um, thickness or whatnot. And I did, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, first, um, this is gonna be the dado on the back of the carcass, and this is where the uh, <laughs> the back of the cabinet's gonna sit inside, and it will sit flush. And this is two of the separators um, for the, um, the separates. This is the horizontal separators. And I cut them both together because I want them to be exactly the same. And this is the bottom of the uh, carcass. And I should be cutting the top of the carcass as well next. And this is the um, sides of the carcass. And here I'm cutting the dado for those horizontal dividers. And since I doubled up on the thickness of the dividers, I'm cutting you know, double the size of the dado there. That was one side of the dado and then the other side. And this is the two side pieces of the carcass together and you can see the dado going down the middle for the dividers. And here I am cutting some more dados into the side of the carcass. And at this point, um, I use my domino to Put these uh, mortises on the um, on the plywood, and uh, I guess my battery it went dead on my camera, and I didn't know it, so I didn't get the footage of using the domino. But I'm pretty sure y'all have seen people use dominoes a hundred thousand times, so you're not really missing anything. And there you can see the dado at the top. This is gonna that's for the vertical separator, and then on the sides you can see the um, horizontals. And after doing the test fit, now I'm gonna actually glue it up. Just making sure I got glue and all the mortises. Top glue in, I'm gonna move into the bottom. Put more glue on there.
any day now. Cause I wish I could sped this video up just a little bit more. And now I'm gonna lean it over on its face so I can put the other side on. Once again, applying some more glue to the mortises. Pushing the dominoes inside the mortises. And now I'm just going to apply some clamps. And I'll leave that to dry for a little while. And what I'm doing here, I'm taking my little block plane and I'm putting a slight chamfer on the inside of that rabbit. Um, just to help with when I go to put this uh, backer board on here, that be less chance of any tear out or anything. So, gonna bring that inside, lay it on there, and then start applying a glue around the uh, rabbit. And once I get the glue on there and I get the backer board in place, then I'll use my pen neller more or less just to use the pins as clamps. Looky there, that just goes in just like that. Now I just make my way around using my pin neller. And next day, once the glue was all dry, uh, came back and I'm um, putting the, this is the horizontal um, separators, separating the top from the bottom portion of the humidor. And once I get them pulled in, I'm just gonna use my uh, brad nails to make sure they're together. And this is the vertical separators and I'm cutting them down to size now. Again, I'm loving those stock guides. And now what I'm doing is um, cutting those um, 
vertical separators and cutting them down. Um, not cutting them in half, but cutting them down to their proper measurements. And I had to use my, my stop block there so I could get it all lined up perfectly because I couldn't, um, my sliding miter saw wouldn't go all the way from one edge to the other. So by using that stop block, you're able to line it up again perfectly. And there again, doubling up on these separators. So I did the first, now I'm doing the second one. And this is the bottom part of the separators going in. This was a super, super tight fit. You don't know it because I edited this video, but that probably took me 30 to 45 minutes to get that thing all the way in. And I went ahead and put the vertical dividers in as well um, in the top portion. I just didn't get that on video. And now what I'm doing is I'm putting uh, the solid wood trim on the edge. It's basically my edge banding to cover up the, uh, the ugly uh, ply, plies of the plywood. And after I pin nailed it on, I went ahead and clamped them up as well. And I did this on all the way around. Secured it on with the pin nails, then put the clamps on there. And use my flush cut saw to get the excess trim off that was hanging over the edge. And for these middle dividers, um, the pieces of trim had to be twice as wide because again, I used um, double sheets for the dividers. And I'm using the Sapelli as calls to put pressure across those trims. So they're getting, uh, some, some good pressure to hold the wood down. Um, and here I'm putting the last piece on, on the horizontal section. And again, I'll turn those pieces of Sapelli uh, vertical and clamp them down over those to apply some even pressure. Since I really couldn't get any clamps to go across the middle part there, so this is just what I had to resort to doing. And now I'm using my flush trim router bit on the inside and outside of that trim to flush everything up. And this is gonna be the end of part one. And part two will probably be out in a couple weeks. I hope y'all enjoyed this. Like, subscribe, share the video, leave me some comments, some thumbs up. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day.
All right, we're back with uh, part two of the uh, large cabinet cigar humidor. Um, this is uh, me lifting this monster up and uh, I just drew a line at three eighths of an inch so I can drill some holes for some screws just for extra uh, added support. And like I mentioned in the first video, this thing is so large that I'm having to be strategic with how I build this thing. So since I flipped it up, now I can go ahead and put these uh, back pieces of trim on to help cover up the, uh, the plies of the plywood. And here I'm, um, as you've seen in the first humidor I made, uh, the single cabinet humidor, uh, you can see how I resawed the uh, Spanish cedar and taped it up into these sheets and glued them. And so you can go back and watch that video in my first humidor series. And since there's really no way to clamp this, I'm having to use some heavy objects to help um, hold this down flat so the glue can cure. And once again, kind of doing this in stages. So while that's uh, curing, I'm doing the trim on the side of the humidor. And just on a few pin nails in there just to, for added um, security once again. And being the there again, the way I had to clamp this, I was using some calls to help apply pressure across it just to make sure I was getting it down uh, nice and solid. And I'm still continuing on with the trim on the side. And I'm cutting these down um, rough length. Uh, this is going to be um, still part of the uh, back trim. I'm just cutting them down using my miter saw here, cutting them down to size. And taking it over there. And instead of measuring, I'm just going to use uh, the wood itself to get my measurement. Um, sometimes that's just a little more easier to do than trying to get an exact measurement. Same thing here, use my pencil to mark it, went back, cut it, and just gluing those on there. Then we're gonna clamp it up. And that's gonna, after I do the other side, that's gonna be all I do for the back. All I was looking to do was just cover up the plies. Um, and my client, he uh, is going to put some electrical sockets in here. So um, there's going to be two humidifiers, uh, one on this uh, side right here and then one on the other side. So I am just cutting this out, drilling a little pilot hole, using a forcer bit to go almost all the way through and then come back from the back. To This way there's no tear out on the back. And as you can see, I've already got one of the plugs in. And go almost all the way through and then go to the back again. Helps with not being any tear out. And then I use a little saw here to get as much of the access off as I could. And finish it off, cleaning it up with the chisel. And I'm only going about halfway through and then I go around to the back and start chiseling from that side once again trying to avoid tear out. And it slides right on in just like this. 
and I made those pieces of um, Spanish cedar the veneer it's a little bit too big so I'm just using my plane here to plane it down flush and um, I did this a couple different ways in, in another piece of this video you'll see where I'm just using a, um, a straight knife to get it down and then I just sand it flush and here we are again I'm um, applying some of these this glue to this veneer and I'm, like I said I'm having to do this in stages because of the size of this humidor and so I'm basically making some calls there to help apply pressure all the way across And once I get that on there, I'm going to um, apply some cross braces here just to try to push it in just a little bit more. Just trying to make sure I'm, I got even pressure all the way across, like I said. Um, and here's what I was talking about earlier. I'm using a straight knife here to cut the excess Spanish cedar veneer off. And I do this and then, like I said, take the sander and sand it flush. Should have changed the razor blade out. That was a dull razor blade. And there it goes. It's basically flush. And now I'm making the um, trim for the top. And I did three layers two layers is going to be a cove such as that one and then one layer is going to be a large round over and here i am gluing these layers up and I'm going to use a, um, a brass spacer, it's one eighth of an inch, and this way it's going to help me be consistent across there. Um, I'll use the pin neller to kind of put them in place till I can come back and put the clamps on there. And once this glue is dry, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do the third layer, which is the round over. And you'll see that in just a moment. And once again, just for ad security, I'm just going back and pin nailing some more in there once it's been clamped up. And now I'm changing out the router to uh, taking the cove bit off and putting that round over on. And you'll see in a moment, I'll be making that round over for that top piece of trim for the third layer. And once again, I'm going to use that brass 1 8 inch spacer and uh, using it to give me the consistent space so I can pin it and then clamp it up. And here we go with 10,000 clamps once again.
and now that it's all dried up and cured up using a miter saw to cut the uh, the miters got one side cut and now I'm measuring for one for where I need to cut the other miter and I didn't do an exact measurement there I'm just gonna sneak up on it um, because when you're doing these type of miter cuts here it's got to be exact and once I got it up there I uh, clamped it up in place and I'm just using a hole punch here so I can put some pilot holes in And all I did with putting those pilot holes there was really just because I had it spaced exactly where I wanted it. And so this way, since I added the glue, I can come back and make sure I put that, tr that trim exactly where I did have it. And uh, so now I'm gonna, I glued it and now I'm gonna screw it after I put these clamps on. And once again, I came back with uh, some brad nails on this one right here. And I already did the other side and now I'm doing the last side. Putting the glue on. And I'm gonna brad nail this in place so I can drill some holes for the screws. And you can see I'm using the blue tape there so I don't drill too far in. saw here to cut the feet um, this is a piece of doo -doo -doo, I believe um, six quarter I believe inch and a half something like that and um, I'm putting a cove on one side and doing a round over on the other side just to kind of go with the theme of the uh, top trim Now I'm doing a round over on the bottom. And now I'm gonna glue them and screw them. Using the brad nailer just to kind of keep it in place while I do this. And I've got some uh, leveling feet ordered and uh, they were supposed to have came already, but they haven't. So I'm gonna come back and uh, I'll probably get it on the next video of putting those leveling feet in. And this is the end of uh, part two. Um, hope y'all stick around and watch part three coming out probably in a couple weeks or so. Um, it's looking really good. Um, Thanks again. All right, we're back again for uh, what I thought was gonna be the uh, last installment of the Humidor build, but it looks like it's gonna be a four part series. And this is some uh, Sapelli here. I'm cutting down for the, uh, the bottom two drawers. It's some eight quarter stock and I'm just cutting it down to the approximate width of the doors which I want to say I did for three and a half inches and since this is eight quarter stock I'm gonna resaw it 
um, down to probably about seven eighths of an inch. So once I mill it up, it'll be right around three quarters, 13 sixteenths, right around that spot. And instead of using my bandsaw, like I said, I'm just not comfortable doing that on bandsaw because I get a lot of drift. I'm using the um, table saw to do this. And I'm gonna join these together with the domino. So I'm just um, marking where I'm going to place the domino mortises at. And here I am using the domino, lining it up with those lines. And I was originally one of the ones that was like, oh, I'm never gonna get a domino, you know? I feel like it's almost like it's cheating. But uh, as far as saving time, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that I got the domino. It saves a lot of time and it just makes it, everything simple and easy. And here I am, I'm just dry fitting everything just to make sure everything's gonna go together good. long as you do everything right I mean the dominoes it's just it's, it's just gonna go right together and um, you saw me cutting down the pieces for the uh, two doors at the bottom what you didn't see is I also did the two doors for the top and so here I am gluing up the two doors at the top and uh, like I've said before the glue up is probably the most stressful part for me because you pretty much only get that one chance to do it and you only have like a a seven to ten minute window if that um, now I'm just clamping it up so I can make sure everything is nice and tight and after a few hours taking it out of the clamps Making sure everything is square and it lines up on the carcass. And which you can see, I've already done the, the bottom doors down there. And uh, so I was gonna use some half inch ply um, for the bottom two doors and uh, as the center section and um, they didn't have any. So I had to get the uh, quarter inch and I'm gonna have to uh, cut these pieces down as you see right here and um, glue two pieces together, laminate them together to make my half inch plywood. And as you can see there, I'm using a little stop block so I can make sure everything's gonna be um, cut even and everything. So this is me laminating those two quarter inch pieces of plywood together. You want to make sure you get the glue spread everywhere. <clears throat> and uh, just so they're not sliding everything, I'm using some of the blue tape here to uh, get it together so I can put some clamps on there. And then I'm going to use these calls here so I can get even pressure all the way across. It always seems like the more, um, the smaller the piece is, it seems like it takes more clamps. Um, you know, doing a, a lamination like this with that smaller plywood, you would you want to make sure that it is even pressure all over. And uh, as you can see, it glued up really well. Yeah, I've got the blade tilted at about. Uh, uh, approximately about 30 degrees um, cutting a, a chamfer on the all the doors um, just so they just wouldn't look just totally you know just square I want to give it a little bit of a accent um, and yes I did get all those burn marks off took some time but I got it and I'm uh, cutting a, a, a routing a, ra a, a rabbit around the edges of those two 
two bottom doors so I can slide those um, center pieces in that I just made with the plywood. And once again, using the calls to get even pressure. And um, now I'm gonna put some uh, foot levelers on here. Um, I like to do this just because, you know, most people's floors aren't gonna be level. And so this way, uh, just in case the client's floor isn't level, we can level them out with these uh, feet levels here. They're super simple to put on. And now I'm marking for the hinges. I'm using the centering bit there. And uh, what I did is on these screws is I dipped the screws in the, uh, in the wax and then um, screwed them in without the hinges just so I could get some wax down in the holes and then uh, came back and screwed the hinges on as you'll see here in just a moment. Um, here I'm uh, putting the rabbit on the bigger doors. This is where the glass will fit inside. This is probably about three sixteenths to a quarter inch deep. And this is what I was talking about by putting the wax on the screws. It just helps the screws go in a little bit easier. Um, these types of screws are notoriously, uh, they don't handle a lot of torque. Um, they'll break really easy and ruin your day. And once I got those hinges on, I'm just, lining them up so I can make sure I get them in a, uh, the correct position. There wasn't a very um, high tolerance for a mistake here because there is only maybe less than an eighth of an inch of reveal uh, around those doors. And this is where it really helps to have some help. Um, have somebody help you hold this, but you know, when you don't have that help, you just kind of, uh, make things work. So uh, again, there's gonna be a part four and that should be the finished product. And if everybody, I uh, hope everybody enjoyed this and give me a comment, a like, a share, um, I would appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel. I'd really greatly appreciate that and thank you. All right, y'all, this is part four. This is the last part of this series. And uh, what I'm doing here is just drilling for the shelf pins using that Craig jig. And I'm cutting down the shelves that are gonna be going inside. I believe there's 10 shelves and then I cut an extra one just in case the customer would like to have an extra shelf. And this right here, I'm cutting down some uh, Spanish cedar that's gonna go on the front of those shelves just to cover up, to cover up the plies. And uh, right now I'm measuring and drilling for the knobs, the door knobs. I'm enjoying a nice little cigar, cleaning the hole out, putting the screw in, Putting the knob on, still enjoying my cigar. And uh, I'm gonna use some fasteners and I'm gonna use some magnets. And here I'm drilling for the magnets. Um, just uh, using a forstner bit, using some epoxy to put those magnets in place. And I'm using a center finder right here so I can press the door up against it so I know exactly where to drill for this magnet. And here they are, they just close right on up. Boop. 
and uh, separating shelves between the bottom casing and the top casing I'm just using my router here to cut through um, using spacers so I can get them all spaced appropriately and at the same distance just kind of make it look nice this just allows the humidity to come through from the bottom where the humidifier is going to be at there's a close-up of that and now I've got the Spanish cedar here and I am um, cutting down this board and this is I'm gonna start constructing the, the baskets um, I didn't get great footage of these baskets um, I started making the baskets like I normally do and I figured out a way to do it that's um, easier and personally what I feel like is better um, one of the things I was gonna do after I, I, I cut these out on the bandsaw I was gonna use the, uh, the pattern that I made with the half inch plywood and then use my pattern bit to make everything nice and pretty and then I got to thinking to myself this was stupid it'd be easier just to put a couple of these boards together and run them across my jointer made it way easier and a lot quicker and uh, well like you go like you say you live and you learn so there I am getting the top switching the clamps around getting the bottom and just like that too easy and now I'm cutting them down into 3 16 inch strips once again just using my table saw just a little at a time with each pass then I raise it up and um, this is where I kind of did things differently and you're not gonna see how I, I did it because I didn't get it filmed but normally I put those little grooves in there and then as you can see how I'm doing on this one um, I'm gluing those little strips in place but I did that one didn't like it threw it away and found another way to do them and I'll probably make a video on that just just making the baskets themselves um, here I'm drilling for the locks bloop like that huh putting the lock in and um, now on each of the individual shelves I'm cutting these little slits once again allows that humidity to come up from the bottom and circulate throughout and uh, here's the final product minus the glass I need to get this video out still ain't got the glass in there but you know what when that glass is in there it's probably pretty much gonna look like it does right now it's gonna be clear so I hope y'all enjoyed this series thank you for watching Goodbye.